Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome again back to the Humble Park Chicago Avenue Community Roundtable for August. So uh, today should be an interesting day as we get close to the end of the RFP process. Getting into the agenda, um, we will have a, a quick NOF update for New Round that is open now. Uh, we will have an open space for any West Humble Park Development Council updates. And then get into um, the Humble Park Chicago Avenue uh, evaluation overview, um, as well as a evaluator nomination um, process for the uh, Humble Park Chicago Avenue and Best Southwest RFP. Uh, and then end with a quick update on uh, the quarter RFP. Um, as we get close to the deadline of August 31st, which is next Tuesday. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this afternoon. Um, welcome to our, our community members who continually uh, support the round table uh, by attending, as well as uh, welcome to the aldermen and automatic staff of Alderman, Aldermans, Burnett, and um, Mitz. So I'll, I'll take a quick pause. If there's anyone new on the line to say hello, uh, feel free to say hello. Um, Otherwise, we'll we'll keep rolling with our agenda for today. All right, let's keep rolling. So uh, I hope everyone's summer is going well. Um, I know we're, we're in August, uh, kind of in the dog days of summer, uh, but um, there there's still a lot of uh, active energy um, going here at City Hall. Um, let's start off with a department update. Uh, just wanted to uh, update everyone on the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. A new round has opened up, uh, opened up last week on August 16th. The deadline is September 24th. Um, uh, both NOF small and large are open. For more uh, info, uh, on the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, uh, please go to uh, the link as listed uh, here on the screen, neighborhoodopportunityfund.com slash apply. I will dump that info into the chat so that you all have it as a readily available clickable link. Stuff. Um, I'm gonna kick it over to Nifitari for any updates from uh, West Humble Park Development Council. Or Adrian. Adrian, welcome. Hi, I'm here. Hi. I'm not sure if she's having some difficulty. Okay. Oh, go ahead. So I could give you a quick update on uh, two things. We are working with Navigators as folks for the Back to Business uh, grant that the state is offering. Uh, if you haven't heard anyone on the line, the applications period open August the 18th and it will go to the end of the year. It's a $250 million grant for businesses that experience losses due to COVID-19 and the grant sizes are five to $150,000. Um, some of the other things that we're working on, um, right now we're doing a seasonal cleanup for our, there's a stormwater garden on Chicago Avenue. 
It's a beautiful um, a stormwater garden. It's, it's more, um, right now it needs a major cleanup. So this is our second annual cleanup. We are hiring someone to clean it up and hopefully have something for the fall in that space. And then um, there's a new bag. We have on the Chicago new corridor. If no one hasn't seen the new banners of two of the schools, we have a grammar school and a high school uh, artwork from some of the students that are being portrayed, uh, portrayed up there on the corridor for the whole mile. Beautiful artwork. Please come out and visit it and support the schools. Um, Nefertari, do you have anything else? Did I miss anything? I'm sure I did, but. We can keep it short. <clears throat> I think Sorry you covered. You my face mm -hmm. got in construction of my house. I believe uh, you covered uh, the main things, um, the grants, the NOF, and the um, and the back to uh, back to work, back to business grant. Those were the two major things. Hi everyone. Hi Ernest. I got your message. Hi Adrian. Well, thanks, Adrian Nefertari. I really appreciate the the updates. Um, and uh, if there's any any flyers or anything, um, you know, feel free to send them my way, and I'll, I'll incorporate it in the, the PDF out to everyone of the recap. Oh, Ernest, there is one more thing. Um, yes. So there's a survey that was put together by Urban Maine. Uh, Nefertari, you want to, because she sent out the information and we're hoping everyone, if you have not received it, we can send it out again. Please reply to that survey. Uh, it's concerning the corridor and um, anything else on that, Nefertari, what it's concerning, but it's a it's an easy survey to take. You can actually take picture with your smartphone right questions right so the importance of the survey uh, is to help us with uh, the vision of rebuilding uh, the corridor so to ask questions such as uh, what businesses would you like to see first of all uh, what would you like to see what's here what's not here what do you like currently what don't you like uh, what changes would you like to see? So pertinent questions such as that. Um, as you all know, our, our goal is to uh, enhance our corridor so that we can have the goods and services within walking distance from where we are. Uh, our goal is also to make our corridor a place where uh, we can live, eat, our children can play and be safe. So the survey would help us toward that goal. So we would encourage, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, every resident, business uh, owner, stakeholder to go out, take a couple minutes and uh, respond. That's it. Thank you, Ernest. Oh, thank you. Okay, next up. Uh, I wanted to go over um, the Humble Park Chicago Avenue evaluation uh, process and over an overview of the, the whole evaluation process for the uh, RFP uh, as uh, it comes due um, this month in a few days, August 31st. And um, uh, after that, uh, we will uh, be evaluating the responses we receive and um, selecting a, um, a winner. So uh, without further ado, here's the presentation. So as a kind of a quick recap for those, um, uh, who weren't here at the beginning of the process um, or as a refresher to all um, as well, uh, why, why select an RFP? Um, so, you know, we've, we've gone through this process because we, we felt that um, 
uh, the, the RFP process allows us for an opportunity to um, have uh, the ability to um, uh, create and select visionary work, uh, visionary, uh, visionary development. Uh, RFP establishes a, a vision for uh, the site based on uh, community input, design excellence, and market realities. Uh, proactively uh, sets the agenda for transformation rather than reacting to a developer-driven proposal or proposals. Uh, secondarily, um, uh, the RFP process is competitive. It solicits multiple responses and in a competitive environment to ensure developers and designers are putting their best foot forward. The RFP process uh, is transparent as community engagement throughout the process provides an opportunity for input on site vision, uh, evaluation, criteria, uh, and uh, proposal uh, selection. So what are the next steps right now? Um, as you see here on the screen, uh, we are transitioning out of uh, the dashed yellow line portion of responses uh, developed and into the third step um, of the evaluation. Um, as a during this this part, uh, the respondents uh, um, present will present their proposals to the community uh, and the evaluation committee will review it. Um, and so one question you may be asking yourself is, who is this evaluation com committee? Uh, within our first round of the Invest Southwest RFP process, the evaluation committee looks like this, as you see on the screen, uh, members of DPD, uh, in our various uh, different sub branches of planning and design, financial incentives, sustainability, zoning, um, and zoning. Well, sustainability is there twice, excuse the typo, as well as uh, colleagues from the Department of Housing, uh, Department of um, well, CDOT, uh, the Department of Transportation, as well as AIS, Assets, Information, and Services, and the chief equity officer of the city. Kind of transitioning into uh, round two, that process expanded to include uh, three community evaluators, um, as well as uh, uh, advisory reviewers from CDOT, zoning and sustainability. So we will be taking a similar approach um, in the third round of um, Invest Southwest RFP rollouts by having- Dennis, I have a quick question. Who, can you go back? So are the community evaluators, the, they're not the advisory reviewers there? It's, we, we don't know who the community evaluators are? Well, we are going to uh, select who is the community evaluators coming up. Okay, cool, thanks. No, no problem. So uh, getting into the evaluator selection process um, on today's round table, uh, uh, love to solicit nominations for the community evaluators. As you see here on the screen, um, the evaluators can be um, quarter manager, uh, residents, property owners, business owners, um, as well as uh, individuals from local community organization. As you see here on the screen, uh, the selection process, for the selection process, uh, uh, the potential community evaluators will be nominated by roundtable participants. Uh, Self-nomination is allowed. Um, the requirements for the nomination are, you must reside uh, within the community area boundary, uh, must have participated in the RFP visioning process, uh, that is attending 
attended a, a visioning workshop, a community roundtable, or other uh, RFP project related meeting, and or have taken um, a visioning survey. Uh, must not have a conflict of interest in relation to the RFP respondents. Uh, you must also commit to attending up to three evaluation meetings uh, and affirm in writing that there is no conflict of interest and sign a non-disclosure form. Final community evaluators will be selected via a lottery uh, if more than five nominations are received. Um, so again, that's, that's uh, three community uh, evaluators. And um, just a, a background on the round three evaluation process. Um, so, uh, Right now will be the selection of the community. Well, um, first part would be the selection of the uh, community um, evaluation committee mentors, uh, followed by a summary of proposals uh, by um, by myself, the DPD project manager, uh, development developer presentations to the public. Um, the first evaluation committee meeting, uh, a second evaluation committee meeting and selection and announcement um, further down the road in, in the second step. Um, so um, kind of in more detail, uh, that all looks as you see here on the screen. Um, we will be selecting today, or soliciting today, uh, five nominations for community evaluators. Uh, of which uh, the selection of the community evaluators would be three evaluators uh, and two alternatives um, that will all get shuffled out through that uh, lottery system. Um, and then kind of the, the more nuanced um, portions uh, of the next steps are, are shown here. Uh, we'll be presenting the Proposals and automatic briefing uh, to Alderman Burnett. Um, there will be a summary uh, presentation um, as well as, as, well as um, a project summary that will be posted on the DPD website. Uh, from there, um, There will be um, developer presentations, um, a summary matrix that will go out to all, and a community scorecard that um, will score uh, the proposals accordingly. Um, evaluators will uh, set up the expectations and process um, in their meeting, as well as have an initial discussion of the proposals. And uh, during the, the latter meeting, um, deliberate and, and find consensus. Um, and then the uh, selection and announcement should happen towards the, the latter end of October um, as to who the winning respondent will be. So let's see. So, uh, last slide I have, um, which uh, revolves around uh, adopting a consensus model. Um, the the city and, and community will. Um, will have consensus over the, the, the winner and that, that kind of boils down into uh, kind of what you see here on the screen. Um, so um, the consensus model will, that we're using uh, is kind of broken up in, into this 30-40-30 uh, uh, breakdown here 
does the proposal reflect the community's vision and build community wealth? Is the proposal a great example of professional competence? And is the proposal economically feasible? So uh, from there, uh, I will kind of take a pause to kind of um, um, ask everyone on the round table um, for any nominations um, uh, for community evaluators. And if there's anything that you would like to see, um, I'll go back actually to that slide that kind of uh, outlines um, uh, the selection process and keep that on the screen for everyone to see. Um, but uh, the floor is open for, for nominations for community evaluators. Ernest, before we uh, get to that, can you tell me how many RFPs responded to the request? Yeah, Kathy, actually, I cannot act because um, uh, we have not reached that August 31st deadline yet. So um, uh, August 31st, 4 p.m. is the deadline for submittal. As of yet, um, nothing has come into City Hall, but we expect on August 31st, um, typically that's that's when we get the submittal. Right? Any teams that are working on a proposal right now, um, they're going to use every single last minute and second they can get to uh, close out that RFP before they submit it into us. Um, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll know basically September 1st, uh, how many we have. I will say um, there, there, we, we, you know, I, I have filled a, a few emails. Um, we, we have roughly 60 unique uh, downloads of the RFP. Um, so uh, we, we are expecting um, at absolute bare minimum one proposal. So I'd say, we, you know, we'll, there's ballpark uh, safe estimate, um, which could totally be blown out of the water and I'd be happy if it is. We'll, we'll be receiving somewhere uh, between maybe two to five proposals. And if we get more, great. But if we're in that, that nugget, that's great too. Uh, Ernest, just a question. Is this the only day to nominate people for uh, to be a community selector? Evaluator, sorry. Great question. Um, that is a great question. Uh, Jim, I see you're on the line. Uh, yeah. So, so what did you have in mind? Are you, are you talking about, you know, next Thursday? Or are you talking about later today or tomorrow? Oh, no, not, not next Thursday. Like I'm thinking through, like, at least I, I invited, um, so I don't, I don't know for anybody else, but just my experience right now is I'm thinking through um, the parents and uh, staff and community that I know of that live in the community and mm -hmm. also, and also that attended the envisioning workshop. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many did or didn't. And so like, I don't, I'm not sure if they even, like there's one person I have in mind that I definitely want to ask, but I don't know if she's able to. And so like, like, I'm just thinking through, like, I want to make sure, sure that, you know, um, and I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. I, listen, I, I, I understand. And I was teasing a bit. Yeah, you know, I think we, we're, we're going to be reasonable. We, you know, we, we, we want to make sure that we were respecting everybody who's going to be here today, obviously. Um, but I would think by tomorrow we would be okay. Would, would that be enough time for you to do whatever outreach you think you need to do yeah. and submit something back? Yeah, I can definitely okay. check. And my, my other question, I guess, for maybe everybody else, but like, uh, so I invited people, but like, I'm not sure on if the, for the visioning process, if they participated. And so is there some list of attendance that we can refer to? Cause you know how sometimes it just takes one person to ask somebody to like, really be like, listen, you should be here. Like, yeah. I know you attended it. 
you can have a say and you can have a voice in, in what happens in your neighborhood. So is yeah. there a way we can get that attendance list? Yeah, this, this, well, here's what you can do. Just make the nomination because we're going to go through a okay. process and do our vetting. Yeah, so just make the nomination. Don't even think, we don't need to think that hard now. We just want to get candidates. Okay, I got you. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Okay. Yeah, on that, um, I, I know from the divisioning workshops, um, we tried to do our best to, to keep a, a list of who attended, but um, I need to double check to see if we have a, a hardcore list of attendees. I know the way that we, we did the divisioning sessions, um, uh, we did it in a format that um, um, we, we didn't uh, uh, pre-register individuals' names, um, but um, we do have some notes on who attended and um, so we, we can kind of uh, cross-reference that. Okay, and great. After this meeting, I can send out the slide um, so that everyone is aware like, of, of um, what it means if you're nominated and if uh, selected uh, that you are attesting to, to everything here. Um, I'm sorry for the next question. No worries. <laughs> no, go ahead. Now. It just will help me to let people know what I'm nominating for. So if we nominate somebody, uh, like what happens next? Are they just automatically put in or you all check with them to make sure they have these requirements and that they can actually do it. And then, you know, they're put in the lottery. Well, that's a great question. Um, I would say if the, you know, if they're, they're nominated and we have their contact info and if they're not here present on the call, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk with them to make sure that, you know, they, they, they fit the, the criteria. As, as listed here, and um, that they're, they're part of that lottery process if we, we get more than uh, five nominations. Cool, okay, thank you. No problem. So with that said, any, any nominations uh, anyone would like to uh, bring forward, either self-nominations or nominating anyone? Um, I, I would, so like I said, I don't know if she can, but I would like to nominate Chantel Johnson. She is a member of the community. She works at Roe Clark um, and she's lived and went to Roe Clark. She's an alumni, so she has been there a long time. Great, thank you. Uh, any others? So I'd like to uh, nominate Adrian. I know she's on the call. She can uh, acknowledge or say no if she wants to, but I, she's been involved all along, you know. Oh yeah, I, I forgot to mention, Adrian is uh, automatically um, a part of it, given that she oh, okay. is a uh, quarter manager. Well, good, so. Surprise, Adrian. <laughs> And you said the court, the uh, nominee has to live in the community or can they be really involved in the community or have businesses in the community? So we have some business owners also that may not live in the community, but their stakeholders on the corridor really invested and they fit the other criteria. How does that work? Yes. So, uh, yeah, if their their businesses with along the corridor are you know they're nonprofit, yeah, they they can be um, part of the community evaluators. Uh, it isn't um, exclusive to to living in the community. If they they have a stake in the community, um, did you say can, nonprofit or profit? Nonprofit. So that covers both profit and nonprofit business okay. and nonprofits. Um, um, any of the nonprofits um, that are within um, uh, that normally attend our roundtable has been part of the divisioning workshops. Um, you know, um, those those individuals they they can be community evaluators. So I would like to elect Abe Passat. 
stakeholder, really involved business owner on the corridor. Okay. And thank you, Kathy. Abe, do you accept that nomination? Yeah, thank you, Adrian. I uh, do accept so long as it doesn't create a conflict um, um, in the future. I don't anticipate applying for NOF in this round, but I'm almost certain to apply in future rounds. And so as long as it doesn't disqualify me um, from participating in future rounds, um, I, I would accept it. If it does, then I think my role as someone who, um, as a stakeholder who wants to continue to improve the corridor from the real estate side, I think is more valuable than um, my role in the committee. So I guess I do so long as DPD has no issue with um, my future participation in um, NOF, SPIF, et cetera, grants. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any issue there. Either. So uh, I'll, I'll triple check just to make sure, but I, uh, as outlined, I, I, I believe you're, you're able to, to be nominated. Any other nominations anyone would like to put forward? Uh, anyone here on the call or anyone who's been previously uh, on a round table that you know is uh, in a divisioning process. Then, since no one else is nominating anyone, Elisa Ivy, community member, uh, she's at the alderman's office. Is that a problem? but she lives in the community. I, I yeah, let's, 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 let's add it to the issue. list. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah, yeah, she she lives in the community. I don't see why not. Yeah, okay, I don't yeah, I believe that's say, I don't yeah. think I would probably have a conflict of interest with any of the potential developers, but as far as my position, there, if you don't think that there's a um, conflict of interest there, then yes, I will accept the nomination. Thank you, Adrian. Great, thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Adrian, for that that um, that nomination. Any other nominations? Okay. Going. So we'll twice. get back. To, everybody will get back to you tomorrow, right? Everyone, because you need how many? Uh, uh -huh. I I would say. Uh, well, overall, uh, we need uh, three community evaluators and, and two uh, alternates. Uh, so a total of five. Right now, we have uh, four nominations. So. Um, but I'm not included in that, am I correct, as corridor manager? Uh, you, you are included with that. In that count, okay. Yeah. All right, well, um, unless anyone has any more, I will send out after this meeting uh, this she here and um, the call for more nominations. Uh, and that we will close out um, looking for nominations uh, either tomorrow or Friday. Okay, sounds good. Okay, well, um, From here, uh, there was another part of the presentation that 
dealt with some feedback. And uh, Shamika, I see in the chat your um, your response of being interested in listening and learning. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, but can you speak a little bit more to that? Is that uh, you're interested in, in, in uh, self-nominating or just- Well, that, right, that was the thing. I didn't necessarily want to self not I didn't know if, I, you know, I mean, if you need someone, I'm there for you. However, I would, I definitely want to listen and learn if I could just, if you need an alternate or a substitute or something, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm available. Okay, self-nominations okay. are accepted as well. There's nothing wrong with the self-nomination. Well, yeah, I didn't want to, you know, I, you know, I mean, I, I... Yeah. <laughs> But no, Shamika, Shamika, yeah. it's too late. You, you, you're just self-nominated. It's too late now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Take a seat at the table, Shamika. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready for me? <laughs> Welcome to the table. All right. Uh, so um, a little bit about how We'd be, we'll be gathering community feedback. Uh, we have a few examples here um, of, of kind of how um, uh, we will be gathering community feedback for um, the, the upcoming parts, um, engaging with the, the community to uh, be part of the, um, the the further uh, iterations of um, developer presentations, seeing the developer presentations, as well as um, uh, uh, being part of that process. Here you can see on screen uh, some examples from um, uh, the previous rounds, um, kind of an aldermatic uh, uh, flyer, as well as kind of uh, um, from the Brownsville quarter, uh, uh, kind of the flyer of how um, I solicited uh, feedback for um, or at least uh, registration for the community presentations, uh, for the developer presentations to the community, uh, as well as scorecard examples are, are shown here on the screen uh, for Bronzeville and how does that look, um, how that's equated. So um, lastly, kind of wanted to go into the more uh, granular details of the next key dates. Um, so um, we will announce the uh, selection of the uh, evaluation committee members uh, by September 3rd. Um, the respondents uh, to the RFP uh, were, were targeting somewhere between uh, September 16th to the 23rd for presentations to the community. Uh, subsequently after that, we are targeting um, a two week uh, survey window for community surveys to open somewhere around that similar time and close uh, towards the, the first week of October. Uh, from there, um, uh, the evaluation committee will review proposals somewhere around the first uh, first two weeks of October, have an initial evaluation, um, a complete uh, initial scorecard will be done around the 15th, uh, a secondary meeting uh, to garner consensus around the winter uh, will, will happen with the evaluation committee somewhere around the 18th to the 22nd with a selection um, of the RFP winner um, around the 22nd to the 25th and a tentative general announcement around the 28th uh, to the broader public of who the RFP winner is. So, um, uh, pretty much it for today. Um, just wanted to kind of flash up on the screen uh, uh, 
that big uh, keys to next month's dates uh, being um, the RFP respondent presentations will happen roughly around uh, September 16th to 23rd. More information will, will happen via email as well as we are, are looking to do uh, uh, more uh, real life flyers to send out to the community. How that's going to be distributed, uh, we are hoping to have an answer um shortly within the next week or two it may be mailers it may be distributed through uh west Humboldt park development council it may be distributed through the alderman's office uh, or another means uh, to get out to the community um, and then the rfp community survey surveys will open around september 16th to the 23rd and be open for a two-week period and then our next round table will be on september 22nd uh, at 12 noon I'll pause here if there's any final comments um, about anything seen here today or any any last uh, nominations that would like to get be brought to the table. Ernest, just uh, for any other nominations, we just email their name and email to you. Yes, their okay. name and contact info. Including um, phone number, probably? Or... Yeah, that would okay. be helpful. Right. Yes. All right, any other questions? Hi, Ernest. I'm Kamanisa O'Neill from, I'm the Family Engagement Director at Kelly Hall YMCA. I just wanted to know if I could be added to you guys' email for the next upcoming meetings. Of course. Okay, I'm gonna put uh, my email in the chat box. Great. That'll thanks be thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining and welcome. Um, Thank you. It's, it's great to have a, a, a a new member of Kelly Hall joins. All right. Well, um, hearing no other comments, uh, thank you all for joining today. Really appreciate it. Uh, really excited about the next step. Um, uh, what will be coming in the next months, um, uh, as well as. Um, uh, everyone's uh, engagement here. I... Hey, Ernest, sorry. I'm sorry to jump in. And no, no worries at all. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is uh, Karishma for those that don't know. But um, Ernest, I was wondering if we can just share the links to our Vision Zero survey. Um, just again, looking for some responses where we've been working in West Humble Park and talking to folks about how to uh, design streets to be safer. And so um, just want to make sure we're getting the survey out to as many people as possible and would love everyone on the call here to be able to share those if they can. So I'll just, uh, I'll just drop them in the, in the chat, if that's okay. Of course. Nope, no problem at all. And I will uh, do a, a quick, uh, Photoshop or no PowerPoint wizardry and put that on the screen for everyone to see as well. Um, when is the dead? Who was that? Karishma? Um, I'm with Ro Clark, the, the school, and we're always very, very interested in safety. <laughs> I know YMCA is too. Uh, as I see her shaking her head. Um, but when is the deadline for that survey? Um, so we will keep it up for at least another month. Oh, and, great. Um, actually, we have been looking to engage the Y and Oh, hey, so let me find you email. Might, you yeah. might get an email from us or um, uh, a message outside of this meeting, and we'll connect with you all. Please do. Just put my email in the chat. Great. Thank you. Got it. Now, Ellen is at uh, Roe Clark, not the Y. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Roe Clark the and y, people, yeah. The, the Y is also. I have a question for you, Kate. With when you came out on the seventh to the event, did you gather a lot of valuable information from people there? 
Um, yeah, hi, this is Kate. I was out um, on the seventh. It was a, it was a great event. I think what was really wonderful for us to be there is that we um, really were able to engage a wide group of of folks and we were actually in front of Roe Clark and people had lots of thoughts about that intersection. But um, yeah, we had we had some really great engagement. And I think um, last time we shared a little bit about our process, but we're talking to folks on a couple different levels. So that was great to just sort of quickly hear from people, top of mind thoughts. Um, we spent some time yesterday at the library talking to people, um, but we're also doing some more kind of in-depth conversations and focus groups, and we're still trying to get some of those on the book. So if there's a group of parents, teachers, staff. Um, yes, 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 or, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We have, so Ellen, we'll we connect. so many thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. So we'll we'll connect with you. That's, that's why we're on these calls. So as I said, we we're doing a couple different levels of engagement and we're also, this is just the first round. We'll be back out sort of gathering more feedback later in the fall. And we're gonna do our best to make sure that our efforts are aligned um, with the work happening in, um, in Best Southwest as well as some of the other surveys. So we're trying to connect all the dots, but, but we're definitely still looking for folks to talk to. So let's all kind of connect offline and this, the, now is one moment and then we'll have some more opportunities in the fall to continue to engage. So this is great. Awesome, thank you. Someone put something in chat. Um, is your school or your kid's school complaint with HB 4799? Does anyone know what that is or means? Yeah, Shamika, can you uh, expand? Yes, no, yes. House Bill 4799 says that any school kindergarten um, eighth grade needs to have some form of bike ped safety education, safe routes to school. And that's what my program does. And I'm partnering um, with Greater Good Studio and everyone else in Vision Zero. Um, so if you're not compliant, then I can help you. Uh, that is awesome. We, we are a high school. Uh, Real Clark is, but uh, we do tenth grade presentations oh, cool. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. We oh, talk cool. to anybody that comes outside their house. <laughs> okay. If you I came outside it. your house, I need to tell you how to be safe. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll also put your information down here too. This is great. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's do that. Well, this is great. I, I, I love how uh, active the, the chat has gotten in the, the last few seconds of today's roundtable, as well as uh, all this great synergy and connections we're making here. Um, that's what it's all about. So, um, if there's nothing else, um, I'll put back up uh, uh, the next big dates that are, that are coming uh, down down the pipe and um, I will send out to everyone um, as well as um, at um, uh, commence is, is is that correct that pronunciation commence commence is Kamenisa. Kamenisa. yes I want to add to come Kamenisa. I'll add you to uh, the list or our email Thank list you. to make sure you're on uh, future roundtables and um, <laughs> you, uh, messed that, you really messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> No problem, but uh, um, thank you for correcting me. I, I always want to make sure I, I get everyone's name correct. Um, and um, yeah, I will see you all in the next roundtable. Thank you. No problem. Take care of everybody. everybody. Enjoy you. the rest of your summer. Thank, thank you so much. It was enjoyable. All right. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.